Good morning. Good morning. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia indeed. Welcome to our service this morning. Uh, a quick note about our worship this morning. If you grab your hymnal, put a ribbon in number 479. It kind of comes up quickly in our worship and so that you'll be ready for that. Um, Bible study has started up again. We'll do Bible study at seven o'clock on Wednesday evening. We try and keep Wednesdays as kind of a church night and keep that theme going. And so we started up Bible study again. If you can, please join us for that. Uh, like we've been talking about the, our subscriptions to the Lutheran Witness, the, some of us who went ahead and paid for our own subscription because the church is not going to be paying for the subscription anymore. When I got my subscription and then this month I got two. <laughs> so many of you may have gotten two, but what we did for the future is the church ordered a stack of them and they'll just be available for us to pick up here. And so please take one with you if you don't have one already. And take another one and share it with someone who might like to learn more about Lutheran beliefs and such. Saturday, I'm going to go to Sioux Falls and record for Main Street Living. They had a opening that they needed filled and President Seiler asked me if I'd do it. I know it's short notice, but can you do it Saturday? And so. I will be going to Sioux Falls Saturday to record for Main Street Living. It airs just after the 4th of July, so down the road a ways. That's all the announcements I can think of. Any that uh, I'm missing? Council meeting next Sunday. All right, let's begin with our first hymn, number 725.
Please rise. We follow the order of worship as printed in our bulletin. If you're watching along at home, it's divine service setting four, setting one. And let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess, confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now we turn to number 479. Please stand. salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help 
save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly, almighty God and Father, we worship you. seated for the readings. Our first reading for this third Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 3. While the lame man who has now been healed clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, they, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our forefathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead, to this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. <coughs> and now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did you also your rulers, but what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistles from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, 
because we shall see him as he is, and every one who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Be Please rise for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved or for joy and were marveling, he said to them, have you anything to here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are my witnesses of these things, and behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We'd like to invite the children to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. I need your help today for today's message, okay? I'm going to have, I want you to listen. And every time you hear me say, leap for joy, I need you to stand up and leap for joy until, while I count to three. And when I say three, you have to sit down again. Okay, can you do that? Let's practice. Leap for joy. One, two, three. Now, if you sit down, when I say three, you sit back down. Okay, good job. You can do this. You guys are very good leapers. Yeah. Have you ever almost thrown something away, not realizing that it is something really important? Maybe your homework or a toy you still liked? How did that make you feel? It's scary you realize you threw out something important. When you find it again, you're sure to leap for joy. One, two, three, down. Okay, good job, good job, leapers. Now today in the book of Acts, a huge crowd came together in the temple because Peter and John, two of Jesus' disciples, had healed a man that had been unable to walk. That man could not walk before, but now he began to leap for joy. One, two, three, sit down. 
All right, good job. The people were there that day, saw this man jumping around and thought, how can this be? Peter told them that this man who had been healed had been healed by Jesus. He also told them that they had rejected and gotten rid of Jesus when they handed him over to be killed. They didn't really know who Jesus is or what he came to do for us. Peter helped them realize that they had thrown away something very important. How do you think that made them feel? Probably sad and worried, right? Could they ever get Jesus back? Would God forgive them? Peter was happy to tell them that Jesus didn't stay dead. They might have thrown Jesus away, but God had raised him back to life. We celebrated that on this Easter. Leap for joy. One, two, three, sit down. Okay. And it was by Jesus' power that this jumping man had been healed. Best of all, Peter told them that even though they hadn't realized how important Jesus was, Jesus was alive. He was offering this very day to forgive them and still be their savior and healer and Lord. They had thrown Jesus away, but Jesus would not throw them away. Leap for joy. One, two, three, sit down. Okay, good job. Sometimes we forget that Jesus, is, who Jesus is and how important it sometimes is for us. We forget about him completely. Then suddenly, like people, people to whom Peter preached, we remember we've forgotten someone very important. So it's good to know that even if we sometimes forget Jesus or put him aside, Jesus never forgets us or gets rid of us. Jesus lives, and today he forgives our sins and still comes to us to be our Savior, our healer, and our Lord. Leap for joy. One, two, three, sit down. Good job. You earned a good treat today. Thank you for helping. We continue with our next hymn. Three. 
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our scripture readings during this Easter season focus mainly on Jesus appearing to his disciples, a bodily resurrection, and also our relationship to this risen Lord. In our first reading from this morning from Acts chapter 3, Peter goes about proclaiming his witnessing to this risen Jesus, the Christ, to the Jews gathered in amazement at Solomon's portico. Why were the Jews gathered in amazement? The situation, situation is that Peter and John had gone to the temple to pray and at the gate they were confronted by a beggar who had been lame all his life. Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I, what I give you, what I have, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. The man began not only to walk, but to jump and shout and praise God for this miracle. Many people of the, in the court of the temple knew that beggar, for he had been at the gate for many years. Now they were all gathered to see him walk and jump. And as the crowd gathered, Peter began to preach. He tells them that it was by faith in Jesus that this lame beggar had been restored to perfect health. But he included in his sermon the accusation of their involvement in killing Jesus. The Jewish people have been persecuted more than any other people in history. One of the main causes for this persecution had been the accusation that the Jews were responsible for killing Christ. While this prejudice against the Jews developed over the years after the crucifixion, it reached a serious proportions in the year AD 613, when the Jews in Spain were given the option of to be baptized or leave the country. A few years later, those who remained were declared slaves and given to pious Christians. Children under seven were taken away from their parents and given to Christian families to provide a Christian education. In the year 1121, the Jews were driven from Flanders, which is now a part of Belgium, and were not allowed to return until they repent of the guilt of killing Christ. This persecution spread. Jews were killed, burned at the stake, tortured in the inquisitions. They were driven from most of the countries of Europe. And the climax was reached when Hitler came into power in Germany and began his persecution of the Jews in 1933, resulting in the murder of six million Jews by the Nazis. Were the Jews really responsible for killing Christ? Were they cursed by God? How should we feel about them today? The text suggests that we think this, for Peter says, you killed Christ. We make our theme the question, who killed Christ? And review the scripture readings that say who was involved in killing Christ and why he was killed. First, the Jewish people. Peter addressed the crowd as men of Israel, brethren, or some translation, translations say fellow Jews. Peter gets right in their face as he says, you delivered him up and denied him and disowned and rejected him. 
You even ask for the murderer to be re released instead of the holy and righteous one, the author of life, who was Jesus, the son of God. The murderer, of course, was Barabbas, who, who was guilty of insurrection and murder from Luke chapter 23, where he says, they all cried, crucify him. Matthew adds that Pilate said, I am innocent of this man's blood. And all the people responded, his blood be on us and our children, from Matthew chapter 27. Yes, the Jewish people were involved, even though it was perhaps only a small part of the Jewish people. Peter says it clearly. You killed the author of life. But Peter tempers that charge somewhat when he says, you acted in ignorance as did your rulers. Peter and John were arrested for this disturbance in the temple court. And the next day they were brought to the court for trial. Chapter 4 says they were gathered there, rulers and elders and scribes, with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of that high priestly family. They asked Peter and John, by what power they had performed this miracle. The answer was the same, by the name of Jesus Christ. Then Peter brings that same charge, whom you crucified. The Jewish leaders were especially involved in the crucifixion. The gospel tells how the chief priests and the Pharisees took counsel to plot his death under the advice of Caiaphas, the high priest, who said, it is expedient that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation should not perish, John chapter 11. But there were also others involved. Pilate gave that final order for the crucifixion. King Herod had a chance to set him free. Soldiers tortured him and did the final act. They were all involved, Jews and Gentiles alike. But there is still more. God was involved. In fact, he is the final person responsible for the killing of the Christ. But what God had foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ should suffer, he fulfilled. He thus fulfilled. Or as another translation puts it, he made it come true. The people involved were not robots. The gospel accounts explain how they acted out of jealousy, devotion to duty, and severe conviction that this Jesus was an imposter, a blasphemer who was making himself out to be the son of God. Pilate had a genuine desire for peace. The soldiers were only obeying their orders, but God was using it all. God was accomplishing what he had designed from the beginning of time the redemption of the world. Peter explains it for us. Peter says, God wipes away our sins. His sponge is the blood of Jesus Christ. To believe that, I must, first of all, admit that I have sin. That I was born a selfish human being who is controlled by my selfish desires and drives. That I violate other people's rights. That I often act contrary to God's will. That I'm often controlled by greed, anger, hate, jealousy, and all the passions that the sin within me generates. Jesus came as God's plan to deal with that problem. He lives a holy life for me. 
Peter calls him the holy and righteous one. And he died to pay the penalty for my sin. The penalty for sin, the Bible says, is death. Separation from God in this life and in all eternity. To have the life that God intended, a life of fellowship with him, that sin must be blotted out, wiped away. And God does that because his son, Jesus Christ, took all the sins of the world upon himself when he died. Doesn't that speak pretty clearly as to why Jesus was killed and also who killed him? In one sense, you and I killed Christ. It is our sins, our rebellion against God, that evil that is in the wrongs that we do. The others, Jews and Gentiles of that first century, were the instruments. But we and all sinners are the reason. When our sin is blotted out and we can come back and live in a new relationship with God, we are reconciled. We are at peace with God. One way the Bible talks about this is that we have been born again or we have God living in us. We have life while before we were dead. Peter said in his sermon, you killed the author of life, the one who gives life. God raised him from the dead. God gave his life back and now he gives life to everyone who believes in him. That is the message of the gospel. John in his gospel writes much about that life. He quotes Jesus saying, I came, I am come that they may have life, life in all its fullness. John 10 verse 10. And at the end of his gospel, John concludes that there were a lot of things which Jesus did, which could be written. But he says, I have selected the ones I have wrote for one purpose, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and be that believing you have life in his name. John 20, verse 21. That is the life for me and you. It's for everyone, without distinction, for Jews as well as for all people of the earth. Amen. We confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we offer before you our common supplications for the well-being of your church throughout the world. So guide and govern it by your Holy Spirit that all who profess themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord, behold in mercy all who are in authority over us. Supply them with your blessing that they may be inclined to do your will and walk according to your commandments. We humbly ask your abiding presence in every situation that you would make known your ways among us. Preserve those who travel, satisfy the wants of your creatures, 
and help those who call upon you in any need, that they may have patience in the midst of suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful Father, your love for your children stretches higher than the heaven. Your forgiveness takes our sin away forever. Remind us in these busy hours to hear your promises. Let us read and memorize your words so that we always have these promises on our minds. Give us faith by the work of your Holy Spirit to trust these promises. While the work of a busy day surrounds us, let us find peace by resting in your promises. Assure us that your son completed all that was necessary, paying all the debt we had and fulfilling all righteousness for our sake. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, grant us perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that following his steps, we may steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. Show mercy to all your servants recovering from illness or surgery. We pray for especially for Kenny Euchre as he has surgery tomorrow. Assure them of your mercy. Deliver them from the temptations of the evil one and give them patience and comfort. If it please you, restore them to health or give them grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Shed your Holy Spirit upon your people, O Lord, and make ready our hearts this day to hear and keep your holy word, that in the communion of your congregation we may rightly sanctify your holy day, and through your word, with all your saints, come to eternal blessedness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're not passing the offering plate around at this time. We'll bring the offering forward. If you uh, haven't put your offering in the offering plate, there will be a plate back there for you when you leave today. We sing the offertory. responsible for the crucifixion. Help us to have right attitudes in our lives, especially to those who are different from us, to the Jews, to people with different skin colors, that we know all of our sins are the things that nailed Jesus to the cross but he took all our sins on his shoulders and paid the price that we owed fully, that we have forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Grant this, grant this to us all, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Please rise. We pray the prayer our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. We conclude our final hymn, number 829.